Hello, it's Bill, the Knee Pain Guru. Welcome to Monday, March 23rd, 2020, as we all practice our social distancing. <laughs> We've been doing it for years. The Knee Pain Guru, practicing social distancing since 2008. <sighs> okay, today we're going to talk about uh, discovering the source of knee pain and why your kneecap won't move. We're going to do that in just a moment. If you have questions, please type them in the live chat. I do. Uh, I take the topics, the questions that are put in the live chat, as well as in the comments for those that are watching the replay to use for future videos. As now we have more time at home, this is going to even be more applicable. So the more questions you ask, the more I'll be able to see how I can help and guide and direct where you're stuck at because you're at home. What are you going to be doing otherwise? And then the risk of even going to go see a doctor or going to the hospital if you have issues with your knees. Okay, well, what are you going to do? So I can help. I can provide some solutions for you. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the Knee Pain Guru channel, turn on notifications, share this video with your friends, family, and loved ones who are also stuck at home and are uh, struggling with knee pain. So now we're going to discover the source of knee pain and why your kneecap won't move. Now, this is of course based on the premise that you've gone to the doctor and you've got your knee checked out to determine nothing is broken or torn. However, with the new dynamics that are going on in the world today with um, making sure you have that space in your life between other people. We're not interacting a whole lot in person. It makes it a little tricky. So what we need to understand is the source of all knee pain, whether something is broken or torn or not, across the board is nerve irritation. Nerve irritation is the source of all knee pain. There are tiny little nerves, the width of an eyelash in your knee that are being squeezed, sending a signal to your brain that you have pain. Um, and we begin to relieve the, the pain, relieve what's going on by getting the pressure off of the nerves and change the neurological signaling that an injury, surgery, trauma, something happens, the body tenses up to protect itself, that tension irritates the nerves, causes the pain. It, it begins to create a loop that's going on with your knee and the rest of your body that's protecting your experience of what's going on in the knee. So that's the source of all knee pain. It's actually quite simple. And it doesn't matter if you've just had an injury or you've been suffering with, let's say, arthritis or a bone-on-bone -bone situation for decades, the dynamics of what's going on with knee pain are all the same. Uh, hi, Tariq. I see your questions. We'll get to those in just a moment. And if other people that are joining us have questions, you can put those in the live chat, and I'll get to, get to those in just a little bit. Okay, when you start getting the pressure off of the nerves in the knee, you're creating a tiny little bit of space. And this cool thing that takes place in your nervous system, in the neurology of your body, the same nervous system that when the doc, you go to a doctor and your doctor taps your knee with a hammer and your knee jumps, those same reflexes are engaged when you have pain or when you create comfort by getting the pressure off of the nerves in the knee that are causing your pain. And your nervous system begins to reorganize around it. It's this really cool self-corrective mechanism that each of our bodies have. By beginning to change the neurology, by training the neurology, the nerves in the knee that are causing the pain, what ends up happening is you create a new reality for your knee and for your body to relax the tension. You essentially shift neurological states and you set up the conditions that will allow the body to be able to heal what's going on in the knee, which kind of answers 
your question there, Tariq. Um, ACL surgery, that is something that I had as well. ACL surgery on my left knee, they did a patella replacement. That was after dislocating my left knee four times. I had lots of issues. So in looking at, and this will get into there why uh, the kneecap doesn't move, is when, when the body is experiencing pain, it tenses up to protect itself. Could be after surgery, could be after an injury, it could be after a slip and fall on the ice, a car accident, whatever it is, the body tenses up to protect itself. When the body is holding that tension, we don't have the full range of motion like we normally would without that tension. So that limits range of motion, which could include the kneecap as well. There's an interesting mechanism that goes on with the kneecap that in order for the kneecap to be disengaged in, uh, to fully move, the leg needs to be able to straighten out fully. So this is that we're getting into now why the kneecap doesn't move. When the leg fully straightens out, the kneecap should be able to move easily. What ends up happening is when there is tension patterns that are going on in the hamstring, in the calves, because the knee is protecting itself, the knee gets injured, the hip pulls up, the hamstring gets tight, the calf gets tight, you start walking on the, the balls of your feet or the tips of your toes, and that creates a pattern that you're not able to fully extend the leg, which would allow the kneecap to disengage. So the kneecap has to disengage with the leg fully extended. This gets into an osteopathic concept called structure governs function. That in order for your body to function fully and properly the way it's designed to, the structure has to be in alignment. The bones in your leg have to be in alignment. And in order for the leg to fully extend and the kneecap to disengage, the leg needs to, the bones need to be lined up. Now we can line the bones up. However, that still doesn't mean there are that that there isn't tension going on in the calves, the hamstrings, the hips, the lower back, the ankles, the feet. There are other dynamics that are going on. Think of it like um, ropes on a tent pole that are pulling really tight makes the tent pole tight. We could push the tent pole straight, but as soon as we leave the pressure off of that tent pole, the tent pole is going to go ahead and bend in the direction of the tightest rope. Same thing happens in your leg when you know, after ACL surgery, after accident, injury, surgery, and trauma, the body tenses up to protect itself. Normal natural response to the experience. However, it creates a condition where now you can't extend the leg. Your hamstrings and your uh, your hamstrings and your calves are tight. You can't extend the leg fully, and the kneecap doesn't disengage. So we have to look at a bigger picture of what's going on in the knee, kneecap, leg, hips and lower back, all the way up from the head to the feet. Is this making sense? We have some people on the line here. If it makes sense, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to give the v to like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications for future videos. Share this with your friends, family, and loved ones that are that are limping, that are suffering at home with pain. Uh, so now we're going to get into Tariq's question. Uh, had surgery a month and a half ago. Can't make the knee straighten. Had ACL surgery. Any tips? Yes. It, it's, it's all about changing the neurological signaling. The neurology. Your body perceives the injury that you had to the ACL as a threat, as a trauma. So what happens? The body tenses up to protect itself. The surgery is specifically designed 
to repair what was broken or torn in the knee. It's good stuff. Your body still perceives it as a threat. You were put unconscious. They cut your knee open. They repaired. And the ACLU didn't tell me whether it was um, a patella replacement, a hamstring graft, or a cadaver. Those are all different types of ACL surgeries that can affect how the body responds to that. So they're, they're meaning there's going to be a different tension pattern in the body if they took part of your, right, you're telling me they had a hamstring graft. Um, so they could take the hamstring from the same leg or they could take the hamstring from the other leg. Each of these is going to create a different pattern that is going on in how you walk, how you move, how you sit, how you stand, how you sleep. The pain experienced from a hamstring graft on the same leg is going to be different than the pain you're feeling from a hamstring graft on the other leg. So it's the same leg. So you see there's levels, there's layers of stuff in order to address what's going on. Um, so when the question is, well, do you have any tips? Well, yeah, I got lots of stuff, but it's not going to be like, you know, like it's going to apply across the board. You're looking for something specific to what's going on with your situation. As we dialogue as I work with clients, we get more and more specific as, uh, as we get more and more specific, we zero in on exactly the pattern that is going on in your knee or in your hamstring or wherever else in your body that you're experiencing pain so we can customize an approach or a, a program, a protocol for getting your, your knee out of pain so you can free up those patterns. So for those that are watching this that are want, wanting action steps, if you're not already on my newsletter list, head over to the kneepainguru.com website. I'll drop the, um, the link in the description. And you can get on the newsletter list got a video over there that'll help you understand a broader perspective of what's going on in your knee. So that is that is the that is the first step across the board if you're seeing this information for the first time, seeing me for the first time, first time coming across the YouTube video, then head over to my website get on my newsletter list. If you're on my newsletter list, then I would have you get over to Sign up for a program, it's a group coaching program, that we are going to be having a call later today, have them on Mondays and Thursdays, and it, whole structure, private Facebook group, you get all the videos that I would be guiding you towards, so for Tariq, there would be specific videos that I would say, okay, you have the hamstring issue on that leg, so you would be working with modules 23 and 20 to relieve the tension pattern that is going on in the hamstring on that leg. You have pain underneath your kneecap. I'm going to give you module eight for your kneecap to work with the kneecap and then also work with 22 for your lower back and one and two to increase the range of motion in your knee. This is going to give you homework to do between today and Thursday when we meet on the next call based on your how your knee responds. Do you get relief? Does the pain move? Does the pain change? Does it get worse? Does it get better? That's going to determine what strategy we need to go, what, what we need to look at next. Is your body dehydrated? Do we need to change your diet? Do we need to add supplementation to what's going on? There's layers to this game. Most people getting out of knee pain are playing tic-tac-toe. We're playing chess. Matter of fact, it's like 4D chess. So it's very dynamic. We're looking at a lot of things that focus on the mind, the body, and the spirit in terms of contributing to what you have going on. 
Uh, okay, I have a swollen knee from limes, 29 years old male. I have a lime for two and a half years, no antibiotics. I'm vegan and eat very healthy, lots of fruits. Did you have a question? A lot of times the, the body has um, their attention patterns that are going on in When we have chronic inflammation, could be because of the limes, uh, well, we can start creating comfort in the knee. And we can see where we go from there. When the body is in a state of chronic inflammation, there's two neurological states in the body. There's sympathetic or fight or flight state. There's parasympathetic, which is rest and relax. And the body is constantly kind of varying between those two states. When it's chronically inflamed, it's more of in a sympathetic state. That puts the nervous system in more of an excited state the majority of the time. The more we can change the neurological signaling that's going on in the neurology by creating comfort, we can begin to bring down that excited neurological state. And if anything, you're going to be more comfortable across the board. We'll see what happens. How does your body respond to decreasing that sympathetic state and allowing it or putting it to a place um, where it's able to rest, it's able to recover faster? Um, and here is, okay, as you're, as you're name. A uh, persistent swelling for the past month, getting worse, not much pain, just fluid. When we look at what's going on in the world today, we have this perpetual state of fear that's pervasive across the board. Everything you look, it's all this um, coronavirus stuff and uh, you know, you name it, one thing after another. The terrorists are going to come get us and the, uh, the environment's going to end in 12 years. And we, we have all of these things where we're, it, we're constantly bombarded to be in this perpetual state of fear. That puts the body into a sympathetic state. Whether anything's happening outside of my window or not, I'm perceiving this information through my monitor, through my phone, through my tablet, through my laptop. And that puts the body into a perpetual sympathetic state, which slows down the, the, re, the healing process. So the more we can teach the body to let go of that tension, be it after an ACL surgery, be it after having Lyme's disease, be it after sitting in front of a computer because we're not supposed to go out of the house for fear of the coronavirus. So now we start teaching the neurology how to recover faster. And all of that stuff, the fluid is able to drain, the body is able to recover, you get better sleep, you're more comfortable a good portion of the time. What have we done different? Nothing except teach the neurology how to recover faster. It's like we're upgrading the software the software in our body, and I'm talking about the nervous system. We got the brain, we got the spinal column, we got the nerves that go out all the way to our fingertips and down to our toes. These are the tension patterns that get stuck from all of this fear that we experience or accidents, injuries, surgeries, traumas, whatever it is. And it causes like this log jam in our physical body that isn't able to move that through. Is it, I mean, is this making sense? Give it a thumbs up. Um, ask a question. No, Bill, you're full of it. No, Bill, that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, give me an idea. Um, but, Alan, th there's that place where the Lyme's disease, everything we have going on, which has been building over the past month as far as the stress with this whole global pandemic, um, people making 
runs on toilet paper and fighting in the, uh, you know, fighting in the bread aisle and all of that kind of stuff. It creates this situation where it's like we're in this constant state of hypervigilance. I meditate every morning, 15 minutes. I practice letting go every day. It's just persistent and I'm doing everything I can. It's frustrating. Okay, let, let's talk about that. You can meditate every morning that you want to get out of knee pain. But there's another end of the equation. That is the mind side of things. You can calm your nervous system in your mind all you want. You can, I could liken it to the analogy of you get a car gets into a car, you get into an accident. You take that car, it's crooked now. It's not driving straight. I'm going to go park it in a garage. And I park that in the garage for a month. If I take that car out of the garage after a month, is the frame going to be straightened out? No, of course not. Because nothing's been done to the frame. Nothing's been done to the car to line it up, to straighten it back out. It's still crooked. So you can meditate every morning to get yourself centered and calm and balanced but we're not bringing anything to the neurological patterns that are stuck in the physical body that are causing the pelvis to be out of alignment, the neck to be out of alignment, the knee not to uh, function correctly. So we need to not only take that meditative state in the mind, we got to bring it to the physical body as well that begins to unwind the neurological patterns that got stuck in the knees, the hips, the lower back, the ankles, the feet, neck, shoulders, jaw, wherever we're talking about. Is that making sense, Alan? Patellar tendonitis, especially if, if you ignored it for about three months. <laughs> yeah, uh, Simon, Simon, I laugh about that. Simon underscore eight. Uh, I laugh about that because I dislocated my left knee four times. So I, I understand the patterns that you're talking about of ignoring things. Um, fasting does work. Uh, if, if you want to know how to do this, first step, Alan, head over to my website, get on my newsletter list. I have a program it is called Knee Club. It's a group coaching program. I'm pretty much waiving the uh, membership fee with all this Corona stuff so more people can get help. Um, I'm going to put the link in the live chat here right now. Um, I believe... Hold on a second... Yeah, Simon, I'm going to get to you in just a minute here. Okay, there's a link to the program. It already has like a significant discount. It's knocking $300 off the membership fee. We have calls on Mondays and Thursdays. Mondays at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And we get into, like this is more in theory, like what I'm talking about. It's important that your mind is around a different concept of what I'm talking about. This isn't what the doctors talk about. This isn't what the physical therapists talk about. This is changing the neurology to set up the conditions so the body's going to be able to heal itself. We look at water. We look at nutrition. We look at breathing. We look at mindset, mobility, stretching, exercise, pain pattern interrupts, we look at how your emotions are tying into what's going on. So it's it's quite a comprehensive program. And it, these videos are about education so you can understand that you're not going to get into my program and I'm not going to give you leg lifts, leg extensions, and leg raises in order to get you out of pain. It's deep. There's a lot to it. And that's what these videos are for, the education around that. Okay. Simon underscore eight. Uh, <clears throat> patella, patella tendonitis. Fasting does work. Uh, fasting works really well. 
Um, and fasting addresses inflammation a lot of times. It can give the body the opportunity to, to reduce the pressure on the nerves. However, it's important to understand if, if you start eating food again, <laughs> to some degree, the inflammation is going to come back. And those neurological patterns are still going to be going on in the knee, in the hips, in the lower back. Uh, patella tendonitis generally has um, pain, achiness when underneath the kneecap, meaning towards the foot. So, um, and then having to play through it for college soccer uh, just reinforces a pattern because now you're not, the knee not only hurts, but you're also having to, um, <laughs> it's like you're worried about the knee at the same time it hurts. So now there's an emotional component that is going into, well, is it just tendonitis? Did I tear something in my knee? Is there something, am I going to, if I continue to run on this, is it going to get worse? So we have to look at these thought patterns that are going on in the mind that are contributing to the physical pattern and experience of pain. And we just don't one day shut that off. We have to begin to release those patterns physically, which supports the emotional component as well, which is, I, I have a... a client that I'm working with right now. Um, his name is Leonard. Military. He was in the army for a long time. And he had um, trauma to his knees as a result of jumping out of airplanes. You know, the impact from the parachute. Uh, his in, in hiking, doing long marches and things like that. So there was a lot of pain in his knees. He was in um, military conflicts, which meant he had a lot of um, fear for life, <laughs> for well-being, real fear for life and well-being. So there's these patterns that went into his physical body that he's experienced that now result in physical pain. As he started working with changing the neurological signaling in the knee, around his uh, knees, his kneecaps, and things like that, he noticed a lot of emotions that were coming up. Anger, sadness, depression, frustration, a lot of different levels, because his body was letting go of these emotional patterns that were manifesting physically in the physical body, uh, resulting in pain. You want that? You okay? So my point being is we can't just look at the body only on a physical level, thinking we're going to exercise the pain away. There, we have a lot of different facets to who we are as human beings, mental, emotional, spiritual components. And when we start releasing these patterns physically, it permeates through these other components of what's going on. Is this making sense? If it's making sense, give the video a thumbs up, like and subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications for future videos, and um, we'll be like the questions that are typed in, like what Simon underscore eight shared, and what OK shared, and what Tariq shared, I, I will most likely consider for future videos. We'll talk about different things with ACL injuries, with patella tendonitis, because there's a lot of different things we can uh, get into. Um, makes sense. I also heard eccentric training is effective for this. What is your say about this? Um, I think being more conscious and mindful about the type of training that is causing pain or discomfort and the type of training that makes the body feel more calm, centered, and balanced afterwards. We can do uh, meaning. Uh, someone could do eccentric training. It can put them in pain. 
other person can do eccentric training and it relieves the pain. So we have to evaluate each person on an individual basis and how the whatever training that they're doing is making the body feel or the knees feel better or worse. Uh, does the fasting help? I've had clients that have tested. I, I start out all my clients with these pain pattern interrupts, which change the neurological signaling of what's going on in the knee. Sometimes the pain pattern interrupts don't necessarily get the knee fully out of pain. So we need to look at other components that are going on in relationship to the pain pattern interrupts. Sometimes exercise makes knee pain worse. Sometimes exercise makes knee pain better. We have to understand from a baseline, the more we can calm the nervous system down, meaning the more the nervous system relax and creates space around the nerves that are causing pain, then we're going to get the body out of one, pain faster, and then it has a faster chance of healing. So there's lots of factors that go into um, what what's going on. Does that make sense there, Simon? Underscore eight. Okay. You've been going for about a half hour now. Questions aren't coming in that much, which is okay. Cool. Okay. I'm going to scoot. If you want more information, this information sounds good. First step I'd have you take is head over and get on my newsletter list. I give a, send out daily emails that help change the mindset around everything that I'm talking about. So we put it in a better perspective, have some cool stories and teachings and things like that. Uh, there are different products and programs you can get involved in, whether you're working by yourself or you're working in a coaching context with me. Uh, once again, I'll repeat the group coaching program that I call Knee Club. We're running a special until the end of the month because the daughter is home. Uh, we're doing a different dance with all this social distancing and staying home the majority of the time, so, which means I, I want, I understand that you at home are dealing with the same similar stresses and challenges that uh, we all are. So I wanted to make it affordable for those people because we're all kind of getting hit with this dynamic that's going on. So the link is in there. I will put it in the replay as well. And you can check that out. Our next video is going to be Thursday. Knee Club call this afternoon, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. You can check that out if you'd like. Um, everybody is absolutely welcome. I appreciate you all being here. Uh, we're kind of in this together, and we'll see how we can make it through the smoothest, easiest, and most graceful as we can. So, okay. Thank you all for being here. This is Bill Paravano, the Knee Pain Guru, going to sign off for today. Be well, and I will see you on the next video.